Oh, I've got two reserves. Yeah, I knew Tony years ago at Fifth Street Bar and Grill, and that's who he was referring to, Sam Travers, a very good friend of both of ours, a mentor to me. And uh, so I asked Tony what he'd been doing, and he was telling me about the pole that he was carving at Government House. So I went down to visit him, to see the pole, and to see him carving. And uh, we started chatting, and he said, would you like the pole? I'd like to carve you a pole. So uh, I came home, I was honored at the moment, and I came home when I talked to my husband, and I went, this is, can we have this done? So my husband went down, we went down and talked to Tony again, and we made an agreement to have the pole card, so Tony carved it with him, and Mike brought the, the log with some friends back from Government House. It's the base, that, that yellow cedar is the base of the pole that's at Government House. It's a quarter of the, the, the this. I think it's a 300-year-old cedar, but I'm going to ask. Tony, how old is that cedar, the yellow cedar? 400 years old. 400-year-old 400, 400 cedar. And so it was wonderful for Tony and I to reconnect after all these years. And to have, it was amazing to be in my kitchen. Tony carved it just in the, in the, right there in our carport. And such an honor to look out the window on multiple evenings in, in wintertime, in November. And Tony, his son, Tony Jr., his grandson, Robert, uh, Rodney, his son-in-law, and they're all my husband, and they're all with lights, and my husband had a heater set up, and they're all carving the pole. And it's just very spiritual and very um, precious, and precious, precious memory. It's been a wonderful experience. in tradition all my life. When my uncle, when my uncle died, my grandfather, my uncle Warren, he passed away, he left his rights to, to teach tradition to Tommy Hunt. Is, uh, traditionally, he was like my uncle, but he was more than that. So as an artist, uh, it just happens that a treasure chief like me is also an artist. So I, t I took him to some of our old projects I had in Germany and Japan and and he said, you know, in Guacola, he'd make a speech. And he said, you do not make a make anything and just plant it and leave. You know, that's that's a real great statement. You don't just say, oh, thank you, see you later. You have to explain the meaning of it in tradition, what it means to actually universally. So there are different types of poles. There are friendship poles, like this one is. There are more, uh, more trade poles for great chiefs. I've made two from Mungo and Tommy Hunt, and my other grandfather, Jonathan, which are in the graveyard in Lord Bay. That tradition was important to me because it had been lost for 50 years. There's a, a pole that challenges the rank of other chiefs that have falsely, falsely raised poles that they don't have the right. They challenge them and exhibit their wealth with the copper. If a chief makes a, makes a speech, he doesn't have the right with this copper. That's one of the main crests of the Hunt family, transferred through marriage. Now, the, 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 the carving of the figures are left to the artist to display. You, don't, you can put them on top of one another like that, but the artist has the right to, to design it the way he thought it should be designed. The higher the quality and the, the higher the rank of the chief that, that commissioned you. And this one that happens to be the whale, and the eagle is standing between the flukes of the whale. And it's very unusual to do it like that. It's very difficult also. So the challenge was to make it look like that. And I took a, you know, a couple of nightmares and dreams thinking about how to fit it. 
bid it as an artist is a, a real challenge to have a, the ego sitting between the books of well I got leaning forward. Um, a couple of weeks later, it, it did work. The whale's tail wraps around the, the claws of the eagle like that. And then the bottom, the whale, is just it's a whale. Now, the whale is a whole different story. It's a whale that travels around the world sharing its wealth. And it's always showed was a human somewhere. And this time I decided, I was looking at it one night, that the dorsal fin of the whale, to me, looks like it was also the nose of the man upside down, a face of a man. I incorporated that into it. So if you look at it upside down, it's a whole, it's a whole human. And that's never been done. I've never done that before. Normally, the blowhole of the whale, you can see the human face, is a blowhole of the whale. What I've done before was done a human face upside down, blowhole, it looks like the whale's dorsal pin is the penis of the man. <laughs> That's what it looks like we just, I don't think, because the laser like the lad on the back of the whale, right? That's the option of the artist. But the story is the same. <laughs> it's a human traveling around the world sharing his wealth. And actually, I did the painting for the Queen in, a, in 86, I believe that's your, of a painting of a whale. And the reason why I did that painting was kind of painting about this way to, to the Queen cell represents the Commonwealth people at the time. So I wanted to do something that represents us as someone sharing the wealth all over the world. So in that painting I did for the Queen, it has a human figure inside the world. And I was painting. But that's a universal story of the North West Coast, whether it be playing at the Hyatt or Shimshan or, or Quagos. So that's the story of that whale. Uh, whether it be uh, Wavi enough, which is a, a, a whale or a killer whale, it doesn't matter. They both share the same reason. They both present, represent the same reason. So we will get down to bear, which is the bear crest of the uh, protector of the village and a provider of food with the salmon, which is, represents all of the, all of the coast in, in terms of survival. Bear protects you and survives. But also, bear also provides you with a, with a lot of other things after he's gone. The bear teeth, the fur, is all utilized in clothing of, of, a, of a mass that we use. And the whole coast does. So it's an all-purpose kind of a figure. And the salmon, of course, is, is a symbol of survival of the whole coast in terms of food, resources, and that. So this is a... It was difficult to do because if you look at it, the salmon is one side of you. The rest of it is, is split, the split images. So it's really hard to do one side view and rest their balance. As an artist, that was hard to do. This one is even the hardest part to do, which is a man. It's a, it's not a, it's a, like a shaman. He's a, sitting there. He's he's sitting there holding a. a a baton, not a talking stick, but a baton, and uh, he's so unbalanced in terms of uh, left and right. It's not balanced. So it, now you got to consider that to the left. So to keep him, you can easily start putting the nose over here because it doesn't balance over there. <laughs> so you keep keep going back to the center, and it, it's, it's, as an artist, it's pretty difficult to do that. So I find doing this, but this man here is a wise man. I figure that we'd like to represent a friend of ours that passed away a long time ago, and uh, uh, Sam Travers. I think he was a guy that we were uh, such a great guy, and like a shaman, but knowledgeable and, and a friend. And Paul really is a friendship Paul representing all friends, and especially our our very close friend Sam. And uh, when Sam passed away, a year later, I had made a speech at Fifth Street regarding it. Our tradition is one year later, you're in mourning till the last, till the one year, then, then now he's just completed his journey. And so a couple of days before I made a speech at Fifth Street, I had a dream about Sam. And wherever he was in the, in the spirit world, he said, he was very happy. He says, I'm fine. 
I said, well, well yeah, where are you? How far are you? Where? I guess he said, oh, I'm fine. He said, you're doing fine, I'm fine. He was happy. So when I made my speech, it was very emotional for me, as I'm such a close friend, that I said that. And, but it was a journey after one year was complete, and he was happy. That's sort of what this represents. And that's why I incorporated in this, and that's why Shelley and I and, and Mike talks about this, the history of Sam, and I guess that's Sam and the friendship of and the crest ball of the Hunt family and the Quagga people. Yeah, okay, so. Thank you. But the, also, the meaning behind it is more important than what you're making. The meaning behind it is the tradition of our people, the Quagga people that are. Uh, more than 10,000 years old, before the last ice age. When you say that, people go, well, no, it can't be true, but it is true. We've been here before the last ice age, and we're still here in the, frozen in the Bank of Ireland. Before the Ming Dynasty, before the pyramids of Egypt, before the Alexander the Great, before all of that. And when you think about it, I can't believe that, but it's true. We've been here longer than that. Our tradition is older than that, established by our, our grandparents and elders and ancestors. It made polos like this to represent the tradition and the crest poles of the family. This is the crest pole. When I dedicated this pole, I said this tree, this pole was a tree. As an artist, I've now given it a new life. It's not just a tree. Now it is a, it's an eagle, whale, bear, and a sheep in the bottom. Castle of the European who represents the Queen, represents the responsibility of the Queen. I chose a whale because the whale represents in our people, travels around the world representing the wealth and traditions of the Quagga people, all people. So I think it's appropriate that it should be done for that reason. The design it, of course, is the style of the Quagga people. Uh, and uh, I explained all this to the Queen when I was explaining to the meaning of the design, that it's sure the wealth of the, what she represents, the wealth of the people of the world. And in the Quagga culture, that is more, that's our tradition exactly. The colors are not really important, except that they represent the southern Quagga design of our people. It's not the northern and southern, it's not a problem here. We're talking about what it represents. It represents 
my design, our design of the sun, quite enough people. It's not, we're not limited, you know, it's not necessary to get into involved with the design concept and the limited to color and all that. Uh, but the, cor the whale, or the hunt family, or the hunt, or the orca, travels in packs where they are very dangerous, like all peoples of the world, to pr for protection to themselves. In terms of, uh, uh, on a friendly basis, the travels throughout the world, protecting the people and in the, in the sharing the wealth of the travel of the whale or the orca, as you call it. It's a long, it's a long history of the quagga whales representing orca. We have rattles, headdresses, masks. Uh, and designs of the crest people, of, the, of our people. This is a very reserved and uh, a very traditional and strong tradition represents the Quagga people, the southern Quagga people of the Northwest Coast.